Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brit Workshop. I've been asked to make a frame for this picture which you see here. It's one of the grandchildren. Therefore, this is a priority task. I've decided I'm going to use oak and I've planed up some oak already for the task and it's going to be a very simple picture frame. Now the two main tools that I'll be using are my Festool Domino Jointer and also my beautiful Festool OF1400 router. And I'll be finishing it with uh, this new, or certainly new to me, finish from Osmo. It's their 3092 Gold Transparent. Now, once I've made up the uh, frame, I'm going to put a rebate in it here. And there's the picture. And uh, this would be uh, the rear here. And you'd be viewing uh, the picture from the front. Now, in order to make that rebate, I'm going to use this rebate cutter from Axminster. And it's one of their Excalibur uh, cutters. And the beauty of this one is that it comes with a set of four uh, guide bearings here. And that means that the rebate that you're going to put in here can be of various widths according to the size of the bearing that's placed here. And I've measured uh, this diameter here and it's uh, is very close to 35 millimeters. And I've measured the diameter of the various uh, bearings that are supplied. And for this task, I want to use this large bearing because that will give me a rebate, which is eight millimeters across. And probably the easiest way to undo this uh, little uh, bolt on the end in order to change the bearing is to mount uh, the cutter in your router. And if you have a router like this one from Festool, then uh, you can lock the shaft so that the cutter will not uh, turn. Uh, and that allows you then to very easily undo that little bolt at the end. Now, whenever you do something like this for the first time, take extra special care to make sure you uh, see what order the various bits and pieces go in, and particularly where the washers go. So there, there's the bearing we've just taken off. There's a washer underneath it, so I'm making sure that stays there. And I'll put this bearing on, and then on goes the screw. So I've cut my stock to size, and I've just pushed it together uh, the way it's going to be jointed. Now, part of the idea of laying it out like this was to get the grain looking right for the various pieces of wood and get them round the right way. And the way I've got it now is the way uh, I think looks best from my perspective. Uh, we're now going to do the marking up for the domino joints. This is a domino and it's very easy to use the domino as a tool because all you need is a centre line on each side of the joint and that allows you then to make a hole in exactly the right place which takes these floating tenons. And it is the most brilliant method of doing woodwork. It's transformed the way that I do jobs in the workshop because it's so quick and easy now and it's also very accurate. You may be able to see that I've put a, a letter A here, there's a B at that end, C in the opposite corner and a D up here. And so I, I now know with some certainty that these are going to go back in the right place. Now my stock is 53 millimetres across. So half of that, is, that's where I want to put the line for the domino, is 26 and a half millimetres. Now you try doing 26 and a half millimetres with a, a rule like this and with eyesight like mine. Not easy. So I've got this and it's an Incra precision rule and I bought it from the woodworkers workshop here in the UK. Uh, I think it was about £25, including VAT. Uh, and it has transformed the way uh, that I do my marking up. It is so easy. It's graduated in millimetres, in half millimetres and in quarter millimetres. So you can get a line precisely where you want for this standard of woodwork. And so I want to put a mark here at 26 and a half millimetres. So I go here to the 26, go to the next division along, which is the half, which is the 26 and a half. And there I have my mark there, 26 and a half millimetres from that end. And I'll do the same all the way around. 
And once you've done those initial lines on the ends of these uh, upright pieces, uh, then you need to somehow uh, either transfer the lines onto the uh, horizontal pieces or have a method of getting the joints in the right place. Now, what I've done as one method is just use this clamp. Everything is where it should be. And I can now continue the lines across uh, using my square. And that's quite a simple method of doing it. Put my square there and draw the line. Now, there are other ways. For example, with the uh, domino uh, system, there is this. And this is the trim stop and it fits on the front of the domino machine and you can adjust this opening here to the exact opening uh, needed to fit your wood in between and this will give you a center domino cut every time. In this particular case it's not worth doing that because I've only got to make four joints but if you had 40 or 400 then this is the way to do it. Now I've set the domino up as follows. I've got in here a six millimeter cutter because my stock is about uh, 19 and a half millimeters, so six millimeters is about a third of the thickness of the stock. I've got my narrow slot setting here. The depth of the, the slot is 20 millimeters because I'm using 40 millimeter dominoes. And the depth of the slot below the surface is 10 millimeters. And I've got the, uh, the quick setting here set on 20, which means the stock is 20. Uh, well, 19 and a half, that's close enough. So that's a simple setup. And as long as I do all the joints uh, with this setup, they will all be identical. Right, we're all ready to glue up. I've laid it back out in the correct order and I've just given it a light sand on these inner edges which after it's all glued up would be tricky to do and I've just used a bit of uh, 320 grit uh, with a sanding block and just rubbed over it just a little bit. Now take great care when you're clamping up, don't overdo it uh, with the dominoes, all you need to do is just squeeze it up so the glue uh, goes out of the joint and it's fully home. And really, that's it. Now, I've just clamped it up lightly, just enough just to keep it in place so it doesn't move. I'm now going to check for square. And you shouldn't be surprised that when you use Festool kit, it's been cut nice and squarely and it's going to come together squarely. And it's one of the beauties of the domino system. It's quick easy and accurate. Well, that's made rather a nice job of that. Rather pleased, really. Yeah, that's super. Excellent. So the frame is now mounted on my bench with these two clamps there and there. Uh, but we've got to set the router up. And the first uh, part of the procedure is to get uh, this router cutter uh, level with the uh, top of the frame and so I'm going to offer it over the frame release the knob so I can drop the cutter down until the cutter now is touching uh, the top of the frame so in other words when I turn it over like this the cutter is now level with the base of the writer the next job is to lower this shaft down so it's touching one of the turret posts here and then lock it in place I then make sure that this uh, adjustment here, which can be raised up and down, is in the zero position. Now, if I were to now lift this up by five, six, seven, or whatever the depth might be, and then lock that off, when I now plunge the router, because there is now a gap between here and the post there, it will drop down to whatever setting I've got here. So if it's on six millimeters, I then push it down. Uh, that will make a six millimeter deep cut. Now I'm gonna do this in stages. So my first setting is going to be on three millimeters. There it is. Make sure you don't move that pointer now. And I'm gonna drop that down. And that now will give me a three millimeter cut. So I'm all set up, I'm connected to my Festool CT26 extractor, which you can just see. And when I start this going, it will make the extractor start automatically. Right, 
and I'll just check that for depth and that's seven millimeters and that's one millimeter deeper than the picture is thick so that's perfect now when you're cleaning up uh, these corners uh, try to avoid doing anything that might possibly damage the nice clean edge which you've already established here well the picture fits in nicely and the only things we need to do now are first of all a method of holding the picture in so I've made up two pieces of wood uh, one at the top and one at the bottom and these will be held in with screws and that means then the screws can be removed in order to replace the picture in the future perhaps um, and then we need something for the wire which is going to support the picture well I've got two of these hooks and there'll be one on either side and some sort of wire or string uh, between the two uh, this is left over from the old uh, method that the picture was held on the wall by some sticky things here which came adrift. I'm going to leave these rubber pads there because those will serve to keep the picture bottom away from the wall and I think that might uh, look good when it's in place. So all we need now is one final light sand. Now I'm going to do the underside first and I've got these nails and I've already got little uh, drill holes here which take the screws for the fixing of the picture and so I'm going to use those to put these nails in to keep it off the surface of the bench whilst I do the other side. I've given this a stir and you can see, at least I hope you can see, uh, the rich colour and my surface preparation has been down to actually 180 grit now the trick is with all Elsmo products is to put them on thinly. Now this is interesting when you see the colour of it in the tin it looks really shiny gold uh, but when it goes on uh, actually it's far more subtle and what it's really doing I think is uh, just drawing out the grain or emphasising the grain which I think is really nice particularly with a, a classic wood like oak. Absolutely lovely. Well I've put two coats of the uh, gold transparent Osmo on there and you can see, or at least I hope you can see, uh, just how lovely that looks. So all we've got to do now is to put the picture in and secure it and put on the two hooks so it can be mounted on the wall. This is the top towards me. Here's the picture, remembering where the top goes. And we're going to secure this with these two pieces of wood which I've uh, prepared in advance. And then I have a pair of these hooks which are going to go on the back which will take the string or wire. Now the string is going to go in this direction, there's no point having this hook facing upwards because it's just going to be pulled sideways so have it going in the direction towards the centre of the picture so that's it let's have a look well I'm rather pleased with that I really like the way that the grain on the oak has been brought to life by that uh, clear um, Osmo gold oil I really like that absolutely super I think we've got a couple of parents who are going to be pleased with it too. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.